Doctor Who and the Web of Fear. Well, what's the web? Well, it's just something being weaved by the Yeti, who are in actual reality uh, robot drones controlled by the great intelligence. Now, Web of Fear uh, is an episode that I have. I did not get to see uh, the Abominable Snowman, which because I think it's one of those that's lost. Um, I don't even know if I assume that I'm sure there's audio of all of them, but I don't know if there was a collection of it or not. Uh, there probably is, but I, I, so I that story I, I I don't know about, but this one follows up on it. Uh, th there's 40 years in between them, and there's a character named Professor Travers that they encounter, and uh, he's much older now, but uh, he met the Doctor and uh, Jamie and Victoria in Tibet, uh, but 40 years prior. So now. Uh, it's 40 years later, and for, at the time, uh, this was uh, modern times and contemporary times in the 60s. <laughs> and uh, there's a brief scene at Travers' home where the Yeti uh, reactivated uh, by the great intelligence, and so on and so forth. And next thing you know, the TARDIS uh, is getting ensnared, and they don't know why, and they investigate this, and they end up in the London Underground, and that's pretty much where the whole story takes place. Now, this is a, a clever use of a very simplified set, and uh, keep it in shadows to make it creepy, because you're being stalked by monsters, and slowly but surely, everybody is getting knocked off. Uh, the military is there, and that's significant, because not only is this a follow-up on uh, the Yeti and the great intelligence, but it introduces... Uh, Alistair Lethbridge Stewart, who is uh, uh, fated to become uh, the brigadier, and uh, I guess not quite a companion, but certainly uh, uh, an important fixture in the lore of Doctor Who, because uh, he was the Doctor's boss for a while, anyway, more or less. The Doctor never really obeyed him. <laughs> but uh, the groundwork is being laid. Uh, perhaps they didn't quite know it at the time, but for the follow-up to the Troughton years with Pertwee and where they would adapt uh, a, a previous science fiction series, uh, Quatermass, or Quatermass, I believe, uh, where you basically had uh, a, a eccentric genius scientist uh, in the employ of the military uh, investigating strange cases and whatnot. And that's pretty much the position the Doctor will find himself in when he's pretty much stranded on Earth by the Time Lords and ends up in the employ of of the brigadier for unit but here uh here we get introduced uh to lethbridge stewart here so uh this one uh that apparently took place after the enemy of the world where the doctor encountered an evil double of himself and they were fighting at the end in the tardis and the, the evil double ended up getting sucked out uh through the doorway of the tardis and into the, the time vortex i suppose and, uh, well, that's too bad for him. Huh? <laughs> and they left it like that. So the, sh the story opens up where they're struggling to get back in control of the TARDIS and uh, shut the door before any of them get sucked out as well. Fortunately, they don't. And uh, off they go into this new adventure with uh, the Yeti and all that. Other than that, it's a bunch of uh, creepy scares. Uh, probably didn't need to be six chapters uh, for this particular story. Uh, due to the limited amount of uh, stuff they had to work with there. Not that it w was all that uh, bad, it's just that it kind of uh, repeats itself and that sort of thing. So, uh, But it's a lesson to learn from these old shows uh, where they utilized very simplistic sets and whatnot, but with lighting uh, and, and just the atmospherics, uh, it, it, it works. And uh, the Yeti themselves, are they, they do look rather silly. <laughs> They're just giant fur balls. There is something rather spooky and creepy about the glowing eyes, and that's probably what uh, seals it for them for a while, but they still kind of have that silly look. I don't know what a redesign would look like, uh, but because uh, either way you go, you get too far removed from the original. And when the new series came about, I, they didn't utilize the Yeti for the when the Great Intelligence returned. So anyway, the plot here is the Great Intelligence wants uh, to absorb the Doctor's mind, and he lures him into a trap, and he sets all this up, and that's basically 
what it is. There's a bit of a, oh, they're all trapped underground in there and they're surrounded by Yeti and this, uh, the, uh, the fungus. It's just this blob stuff that keeps, uh, sealing off areas and in, in, surrounding them and whatnot. <laughs> There's also something of an attempt to, I've uh, created an atmosphere of paranoia amongst them that uh, one of them is a traitor and working for the uh, intelligence, and it just kind of fizzles at the end there. <laughs> there's this idiot reporter, and I, but uh, he wasn't it. And then there's this soldier who died, and then the intelligence uh, reanimates his corpse to speak to them through him and that sort of thing. But so I, I don't know. They just kind of, that kind of fizzled. And, you know, uh, but the, ultimately, uh, the doctor figures out a way to uh, combat the signals by which the intelligence controls the Yeti and is able to turn a Yeti under his control and figures he'll use that. But in the end, all he had to do was the he, once he realized he could take control of the situation to where the intelligence was going to absorb uh, the doctor's uh, consciousness, his mind and everything, all his knowledge. Uh, the doctor would put the whammy on the device and uh, turn the tables. Uh, but Jamie gets in the way and utilizes the doctor's uh, had the control of the uh, Yeti. And there's a big fight and everything explodes and burns. And so the great intelligence escapes. Uh, but uh, the doctor is saved. But the doctor's all upset because he almost had a chance to end the threat of the great intelligence. And uh, but then they figure, oh well, we won anyway, and so they leave. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, there are some notable things here. Most uh, importantly, of course, Brigadier, and they they are well. He's just Colonel uh, Stewart at this point. But uh, when he shows up, uh, uh, there's a Captain Knight who's in charge at first, and then uh, the Colonel comes in and takes over. Uh, but uh, the Captain Knight character, who's a bit dubious of the Doctor and doesn't just immediately believe him, uh, is more in line with how the uh, Brigadier acts towards the Doctor in the later stories. He doesn't always just immediately go along with what the Doctor says. He ends up having to learn the hard way, because, <laughs> of course, usually uh, the Doctor is right. Uh, and in this instance, the uh, Stuart just immediately... Yeah, all right, let's go along with this. <laughs> and then the doctor mentions the TARDIS and all that. All right, let's go look for this police box. <laughs> you just believe this? <laughs> but he's pretty accepting of it. You know, and at the t looking back at it, he's like, oh, well, maybe he's. this is why he ends up in command of unit. Maybe he has some experience with uh, bizarre cases or something like that. But no, that's not what... The, you know, it's not all mapped out yet. But... Uh, so it's 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 interesting to, to say the least, I guess that that uh, you know there's different personalities and interactions uh, that he later has. Uh, so uh, we'll see uh, him make another appearance when uh, during the invasion with the Cybermen, and we'll get to that. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, so there you go. That's probably the one of the most significant thing about Web of Fear. Uh, it is a follow-up with the Yeti story and the Great Intelligence, but it's also the introduction of uh, Lethbridge story. And so, uh, for that reason alone, and because it's one of the most very few episodes you can watch, there is, uh, uh, what was it, episode three uh, is lost. So, uh, out of six, uh, you get five. But uh, it hasn't been animated yet. Uh, I don't know why not. Uh, they do have what they call uh, telly snaps. <laughs> These were stills uh, that captured quite a few of the actual scenes uh, from the series. So there's enough information there, plus the audio, for them to do an animation at some point. Uh, but as it is now, you'd have to watch the you see the telly snaps, and there's some descriptions about what the action would be. But basically, you're listening to an audio story at that point. And you can pretty much follow along, and you've already got the setup from the other story, so it's it's not too much of a bother, uh, but it's just kind of sad when you're constantly reminded that all this, uh, this stuff was just thrown away, you know. Uh, but, you know, they couldn't foresee a home entertainment. <laughs> you know? uh, the VCR hadn't been invented yet and all that. So... Boy, but when it, because it wasn't that long away when you think about it. It's only a span of years, and then suddenly you're like, damn, we don't, we could have made a killing with this stuff. <laughs> so, uh, what are you going to do? So, Web of Fear, 
Uh, what would I rate that one as? Um, you know, I, I did it. I, of course, I enjoy Troughton's performance as the Doctor, and I think it really does solidify the Doctor Who that uh, people mostly know. It took a while to get there and figure out w- what this show would do and where it would go and all that. And uh, probably more than Hartnell, although I would say some of the later episodes of Hartnell were obviously going in that direction that Troughton took over. But Troughton really solidifies the Doctor here. And uh, this is another example of that in Web of Fear. So, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, so four out of five stars for Web of Fear, Doctor Who. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, while you're here, why not like and subscribe? And for those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. And also, while you're here, check out that link description below. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you.